Today's the day, the day that many lives will forever be changed. A day that is worth all the years of practice, games, and sacrifices. Like most people, I'm always excited to see the faces of these young men as their names are called. However, I also always say a prayer for these young men who embark on this new journey. Why? Well, that's because a drastic life-changing event like this means more than just a dream lived out. It means that they may have just earned themselves more money than they've ever had in their entire lives. It means that they may instantly take on the burden of others. It means that they may hear from people that they haven't heard from in years. It means that they may need to learn how to say no and be okay with being ridiculed and talked about. On one hand, we talk about life after football, but what about life right when football starts? Has anyone else other than myself ever wondered how this type of life-changing event affects the mental health of these rookie players? We'll hear from a few guys from the 2021 NFL Draft class. We'll learn from these guys about ways that we can make sure we are mentally prepared for a big day and ways that these guys prepare for such an exciting moment. The goal is to always speak out about mental health topics. It's time that we address the elephant in the room. That's the only way that we get better. It's okay to not be okay. So mental health for me is like pretty much everything that you think about. You know, it's it's not physical, but it's in your brain. And your brain is dangerous because your mind tells you everything that you want to do. It tells you stuff that you hear that you don't hear out loud. But it's important because it can affect you in the long run. I feel like athletes don't talk about it as much just because just in the athlete world, I mean, everybody just try to stay focused on pretty much what they got to do. And if it's affecting, like, if stuff and their surroundings is affecting them in a negative way, again, they can feel like they can just get through it on their own. In reality, like, they actually need help. I feel like we can highlight the importance of health, mental health more by people stepping out of your comfort zone and having that conversations, like having those conversations that don't nobody want to have and talking about the things that make you uncomfortable. And it'll kind of be like a domino effect and it leads to more people being comfortable. Uh, growing up, like, mental health was never like a, a topic or a, a thing in our household. I just feel like there's nobody to really talk about it. Um, my mom worked all day, dad out all day, brother, sister, like, we we never gonna bring it up about each other. We were each other's therapists, to be honest. My, my parents were extremely transparent with me. And um, it's something we always just had real talks. And uh, whenever we weren't feeling good, We knew and we asked about it and we talked about it. We didn't just let it go unspoken. I'm not sure why, like, our family don't talk about it. I mean, I I guess it's just because our parents just work in and, I mean, they just tell us, go to school, get good grades, boom, that's it. Like, if you're an athlete, play sports, like, focus on that. So, I mean, it's just not really discussed just because of, I feel like just before, like with them growing up. So, I mean, they, they didn't really talk about it. So it just continues and keep going on. Uh, I, I definitely think athletes should talk about mental health more just because, I mean, it, it can, it just helps you progress and, and get through life. And you, I mean, you just continue to be in a, a stable place. I mean, if, if you're struggling and not getting any help, it's hard to just continue to progress in life and everything. So I definitely feel like it should be talked about more and people should open up more about it. I feel like if you're not educated on it, uh, I think a lot of people don't like to bring it up. So I think the more we get people educated on it and the more we get people hip to like what's going on and the reason why people may be acting out or take it more seriously and you know appreciate um, what's going on around them. Uh, I don't never think it'll be as big as it needs to be. Like, you never know what somebody's going through. Like, even like during the day, somebody can be going through something, but they might be at work. Think about what they're going through. And it'll affect them in the long run, because now it's going gonna, it's gonna to jeopardize you. Because everybody's going through stuff, you know, like hard things. It's just so imperative like, to talk and be around people who that you can express yourself, you can cry. I cry with this man all the time. I ain't afraid to say that. You know, you know what I'm saying? I don't cry with my family and it, it sounds kind of messed up, but like, he probably, they probably know me a little bit better than, you know, certain parts about me better than my family do. So 
and it, it's just only because I feel I feel comfortable. We had those type of conversations, and we can be you know we can be ourselves. I'll, I'll start with something more current, like something I've been going through, and I, I've talked with you know, like I'm saying, I keep real people around me, so I have these conversations. Uh, me and Emo was just talking about dealing with family now. You know, because before I was a quiet kid, I was a real chill kid. If it wasn't about sports or football, I didn't care about it. You know, family functions, I was the kid who was out front playing basketball. I wasn't really talking to people a lot more. And um, I was never the, the center of attention or the conversation of the family event. You know, my family's a big, like crazy personalities. They, you know, spontaneous, they wild. So. Like being in family functions now where I'm the center of attention, you know, and I'm the talk, everybody wants to talk about football now and it's like, it's kind of weird, you know, and it's like, I, I wish it was like that normal, you know, cause I don't, I never really liked all that attention that ain't me, you know, I like to just be by myself, chill, and like I, those are the things I'm trying to adapt to or I would say I'm struggling with, you know, and being in those family functions cause I find myself kind of sitting out on them now. And like, when I know it's a lot of people getting together, I'm like, you know, if I'm not in that mood and I don't want to tolerate it, I kind of, you know, shy away from them. All right, so one day you have next day, and the next day you wake up with me in there. Yeah, what's about that? Oh, man. No, I'm not a millionaire yet, but, <laughs> Not, but not having nothing and then waking up, you know, with some with some money in there, it's like, it's almost like I made it, but then again, I didn't at the same time. Because I've been broke before. I know the feeling of being broke. And now it's just like, when you have a whole lot of money, it's easier to go broke. Because now it's just spin, spin, spin. Because you can get a whole lot of stuff that you wanted that you didn't have. So now it's just a, Matter of, can I keep? Do I have to spend it? No. Now as to where I, I want to keep this money. Instead of when I was broke, I was like, I need to get it so I can spend it to get what I want. Now it's I need to keep it because I have other things to take care of. Draft day. How did you prepare yourself mentally? You know what you did physically. Talk about the draft day. I mean, draft day came with like a lot of high and low emotions. Uh, I feel like during this process, people like to pick out everything that you don't do. You can do everything right. You could be have a 3.0, you could be fast, you could be strong. Um, but then they'd be like, oh, well, this guy, he may not be smart enough on the field or he may not be quick enough. So you got hundreds of people trying to analyze you and dictate if you're good enough or not. So. Um, it's really like a lot of emotion, especially like if you really feed into the media and you see the things that, and these, these are people that don't know you, so you got thousands of people on social media trying to like, almost like harass you or like bring up old baggage that you may have, may have not done. Even on, you know, the day, your best day of your life, you know, so um, it came with high and low emotions. So mentally, you know, I just try to stay off the media. Um, I try to take focus because you kind of hear where you, you got a chance of where you're going to go. Like, I seen a lot of people fall in the draft this year, and I seen a lot of people rise, like, surprisingly go drafted before people thought they would. So, um, it's very strong until your name's called. Like, you're going through a lot of stress. Um, it's a lot of things that you're thinking about, like, like, and you're just trying to prove yourself. Um, not even to like the organization to yourself, like like yeah, this is why I should have gone, why I should have gone, or um, you just want to get that relief off your chest and shoulders, because yeah, you really real life been working. I don't know. I'm t I was 21 when I got drafted, so um, 16 years of my life for just one moment. So you know, it's easy for people to say that happens overnight. You know, or like he did it, but I've been playing football since I was like four or five. So um, everybody always want like a quick come up, but you know, we kind of put in long years just to get there. So I feel like I wasn't really, I didn't really get myself worked up for it because I didn't want to be having like anxiety and stuff like that. So I just treated it like a regular day. 
Um, I didn't invite a lot of people over just because I didn't want to be in that situation where it's everybody sitting there looking at you and asking you questions and all type of stuff that you don't really got no control over the situation. You in there, like just sitting there waiting, curious too. So I kept it small and just, you know, just had my family treat it like a normal day. I mean, drive there for me, from a mental health standpoint, it was, it was a little crazy. I mean, just because, I mean, uh, it was just so much anxiety. Like, I mean, I was just so like, worried just because I didn't know where I was gonna end up or, or when I was gonna be taken. I mean, uh, I, I felt like I played well, but then had an injury in the last game. So, I mean, it, it, was, a, it was a lot going on at the time. And, and it's just when you hear different stuff from, from coaches and stuff like when you are gonna go, I mean, you, you start to just think about it a lot more and like your mind just get to racing. And I mean, uh, that night it was just, it was tough at first because, I mean, just as time going by, just not hearing my name called, it was just making me more frustrated because, I mean, uh, I know my capabilities, I know the work that I put in, and, I mean, uh, I, I was just happy just to hear my name finally called, and, I mean, just having my family, friends there, I mean, it, it was a good feeling. Did you pay attention to Like, during the draft? Yeah, I mean, I, I was on my phone the whole time just looking and it was it was just it was pretty tough. I mean, just looking at social media, seeing people's name called and then I mean, my friends that were there, they're like, I mean, just talking like, yeah, like you, you should have been picked. So, I mean, just along with that, it was just adding more pressure, just more stress. But I mean, uh, I, I know that they just wanted me to just like be picked early because I mean that's just everybody's goal. Everybody want to be picked early, so it was it was a lot to deal with. But at the same time, I mean I, I still enjoyed it. Social media always gonna play a part. It's always gonna play a part. Uh, I was never the one to really sit there and sit and scroll because at the end of the day, it didn't matter like what they were saying. You know, it was the people who were gonna call you and draft you. So. Um, I didn't pay it much mind, but I'm pretty sure some people that got cloudy, because um, that's when the, where the disappointment comes. But um, I mean, yeah, I stayed away from it. You know, it's like I got people. I'm sitting in my draft day. They coming up to me like, "Oh, bro, like, can I run to the car real quick? I'm gonna be back. Like, am I gonna make it?" I'm like, "Bro, it's a draft. Like, I don't know when I'm gonna get the call. Like, if you miss it, you miss it. You know, and like that'd give you anxiety because you like you got people coming up to you on your day." Asking you when you gonna go, like, bro, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's crazy though. To be completely honest, it, you know, it was tough on me, you know, um, and it, it wasn't just because I knew I was going top ten. Da, 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 da. Um, it was really just because that, you know, just that question mark that, oh, it it could be that, you know. So I, I was like very very upset. Um, I I was actually mad at myself because. I feel like I was, you know, I hold myself so accountable, you know, to like how my family, you know, I'm presented as a person, even even to my family, you know, I feel like I'm like the strong one, you know, like in this pressure, but I love it. I've always liked being in chaotic environments just with pressure. So I, I was mad at myself for not handling it in a better way, but I couldn't hide my emotions. Um, you know, I didn't get picked the first day and it did crush me um, only because everybody was looking nice and I felt embarrassed. You know, and, and, it, and, it, and it was kind of tough, but so then I ended up walking out, boom, leaving. And everybody started following me and stuff like that. And it was just getting me more mad, you know, and then I just started walking out. But it wasn't that I was like mad at like God or mad at, you know, my family or mad at anybody in particular. I just felt like somebody made a mistake. Like they're gonna have to see me for that. So, but um, boom, went to sleep, woke up. I was like, what's up, what you want to do? And I'm going to be real, like, I didn't want to do nothing. And he was like, no, you got to do something. Like, you got you, like, you got to be different, you got to do something. So then, you know, we went to go work out, and I just was out of it. Like, wasn't talking to nobody, just, and it wasn't me trying to do that. I just, I, I was feeling weird. Like, I was feeling like, like in a in a space to where, like, I ain't, like, I ain't matter or something. Like, it was weird. And then, boom. Like, I had talked to with Alvin Kamara, and he like looked at me and he was like, if you would've got picked yesterday, you would've been working out today? And I said, yes. 
He like, that's all I need to know. So then he just kind of woke me up, cause realizing he went like, what, like third, fourth, fourth round? You know, and it's just a bunch of people out here. So I kind of felt like I was, I was being selfish in like a sense. You know, I can't hide my feelings cause I'm, I'm a competitor. But at the same time, it's like, getting draft, y'all seeing that, just seeing how much money somebody making. That's not seeing what they gonna do. Nobody can't predict the future. Really over time, you know, realizing that praying is what I needed to do. You know, when everybody's upset, they first initial thought isn't to pray. You know, you want someone to feel bad for you, you want all that type vibe going on, and you shouldn't want that. You know, like your first thought should be pray, because there's nothing stronger than that. So that's when, it, you know, attacked me, and the boys have a conversation like, no, you need to pray. But I was really like grinding, like every day, you know, and it was just something I would love to do. Like, people don't love working out. Like, I love getting better. Boy, that shit is so lit to me. You know, and I like craft and I like focusing on things that I'm bad at because then I'm going to get good at it. And there's going to be nothing that you can say that I'm bad at if I work on it. You know, you know what I'm saying? So that was kind of how I felt, man. You know, we ended up working up, working out after that, you know, get, 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 get it ready. You know, of course we enjoyed ourselves, you know, but it's time to get to work after that. And then boom, ended up being in New York and all my family's from there. So that's another big thing. So it's just a blessing overall. I feel like I fell into the perfect situation. It's only a matter of time to the world sees it. I got a chill. I'm gonna start crying and shit. It's a kid out there that roll his socks just like number eight for the Jets, you know, so you gotta be that type of person that you trying to be like somebody, but somebody trying to be like you, so set the example. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to the elephant in the room, Inc.